All right. So um, this is the first meeting of this uh, book club for a book that I am actively writing. So this book does not quite exist, but we're doing a book club to read it. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about um, the like how that's supposed to work. Uh, but if you want kind of a deeper dive into my whole philosophy of why I'm writing it backwards like this, uh, the link in the chat, or if you go to r4ds.io slash YouTube, um, I presented this last month, kind of the whole idea of what I'm going for here. Uh, but today we're going to get into um, just a brief intro of kind of how the club will work. And then uh, we'll go through the uh, the first chapter, the first or zeroth chapter, depending on how it ends up being uh, exactly written in the book, that it's the kind of introduction to what the book's going to cover and um, you know what you should expect to get out of it. Uh, before we get started, um, there is the site, r4ds.io uh, slash w-a-p-i-r, put this in chat. Um, that's what I am showing here. Uh, this is where I will be or have already created the first draft of the slides and I'll be creating slides as we go, uh, updating them. And these slides um, are what's going to become the book. All right, so uh, before we start, the first thing I wanna bring up, you should have seen it, I think on the way in, in the Zoom call that we do follow uh, the R4DS code of conduct for all these book clubs. Um, Details are available in that uh, repository, but the general idea is that, um, you know, don't be a jerk. We welcome everyone um, as long as people aren't trolling us. Uh, so be nice to each other. Um, and there are there's information in here about what to do if something happens during a book club and you need to report somebody and um, we can deal with that for you. Um, the email address is r4datasci at gmail.com. And that is available to uh, me and the other two admins of R4DS who are uh, Tan Ho and Lydia Gibson. And so you can also contact any of us three on uh, R4DS and we'll take care of anything. Hopefully that won't be necessary. Um, we tend to be a really friendly group, but that's available if something should happen. All right. And so that takes us to, uh, let's talk about what this book club is about. So, um, well, what it's about is this book I am writing, our uh, Web APIs with R, tentatively titled. Um, it is a book for the CRC Press R series um, about how to work with APIs in R. Uh, I will also be talking a bit about what an API is, um, although I don't have that in this current uh, set of slides I'm gonna be showing today. Um, and the idea is, so this is a book that doesn't exist. It's a book I am in the process of writing. And this book club is intended to help me make sure that I'm writing the right book. So making sure that I cover the material that people care about um, and that it's, you know, it's that what that it's what you want to see. Um, I'll talk a little bit in here about uh, the level that I'm expecting people to be at, which is hopefully just pretty uh, introductory. Um, so, you know, don't feel like you have to already know what APIs are to be here. Um, if you're interested, that's enough. So the idea will be that each week, um, I will lead a discussion of a chapter. I will have slides for the chapter. I will, you know, try to cover all the material that will be in the chapter, but the chapter itself does not exist. Um, there might be some pieces of it or maybe even a draft, but it's not the complete chapter yet. And so it's really important, even more so than in a normal book club, for you to ask questions. So as we're going, if something doesn't make sense, that's what I want to want to find out. So um, please be uh, ready to <laughs> interrupt or be willing to interrupt. You can do that with, you know, raising your hand. There are only uh, a few of us in the chat right now, so uh, you can just come off mute and talk, or you can put something in the chat. I do have everything laid out on my screen so that I can see the chat. If you ask a question there, I will try to answer it. Um, or, you know, asynchronously, you can ask on the Slack and we'll discuss things there. 
um, or in comments on the YouTube video. Uh, so my goal here is to uh, the first like the first step is I want to revise and finalize the learning objectives for each chapter. So to make sure that the chapter is covering what people want to learn. Um, and then in doing that, revise and finalize what is covered in that chapter. Um, I do want to point out that the recordings of all of these meetings will be on the R4DS YouTube channel at r4ds.io slash YouTube. So uh, if you don't want to be seen on that channel, for the most part, you won't. It's going to be mostly me. But when you talk, you'll be up in the corner. Um, and uh, so just don't turn on your camera if you don't want don't want that. Um, but yeah, so, okay, I will present that chapter. And then the idea is I'll revise the slides and write some um, like test yourself types of questions, like the end of uh, section questions. And we'll probably discuss those in the Slack a little bit. And then either we'll move on to the next chapter the next week, or depending on the results of this survey that I'm gonna be sending or that I have sent out in the Slack and I'm gonna talk about in a minute uh, here as well, Either we'll do the next chapter or we'll kind of revisit that chapter, talk about what I have revised in that week after everyone's comments, and then go over the exercises that I've written to see um, if those make sense to everybody, if they're, you know, see if you're able to answer them or not, all that kind of thing. Um, some of that will depend a little bit on kind of how much we use the Slack versus how much we uh, just want to talk about it during the meeting. And some of it will just kind of, we'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, that, that survey will be coming to help answer these questions. Uh, and then the idea there is that I, like, I'm gonna take multiple iterations on these slide decks, get them to where I really like the slide deck, I'm covering the right material, everything is working out, uh, maybe do another cohort of the book club even, and then I'll write the chapter. So I, like I said, I might end up doing a little bit of writing in, um, before that, once I feel like the slide decks are as far as I can get them, for example. Um, but until I've iterated on it a couple of times, I don't intend to bother writing out the whole chapter because there's not a, you know, there's no point if the material isn't what it's supposed to be or what I want it to be. Um, all right, so that's the, that's the idea. Um, does anyone have any questions about that piece of it? Um, it's totally okay if you do not. And again, you can ask them in chat or out loud. Okay. So next we will go into the actual, um, what will be the first chapter of the book. Let me lay out my notes here. All right, so this is the introduction chapter. Um, and this chapter is to help you decide whether this book is for you, um, you being, those of you in the call, but also just in general, the reader. Um, it's also to help you identify, or you should be able to identify the major topics that this book will cover once you finish the chapter. Um, we're gonna identify prerequisites of the book, um, such as there are, and uh, we'll also be able to describe what this book will not cover. So if there's something that you're expecting, um, I want to explicitly state, if it's not going to be here, and we'll get into details of what that means. Um, before we go in, and at any point, you know, please jump in. But is there anything that um, you would want to get out of the intro that isn't covered there, as far as you can tell? All right. Well, feel free to jump in if you think of something as we go. If you're like, oh, I thought you would talk about this. So, all right. So I, I created, or I came up with four kind of general roles of um, people who might read this book. These are meant, you know, meant to be very generic, more generic than the wording might imply. So go through them and talk about that a little bit. Uh, so first off, we have data analysts. And by, by that, I mean people who analyze data, not necessarily the job title, data analyst. Um, and the reason that this can be useful is if you have some data, um, you can use APIs often to enrich that data, uh, to, to add to that data. An example of this is just this week, uh, Tidy Tuesday has addresses in it. And I've seen at least one person um, used a, an R package that accesses an API to convert those addresses to latitude and longitude. 
And so that's something you can do with a web API. Uh, the next category, and really I need to rejigger this because uh, machine learning engineers also do that. Like they can also use that enriching of data sets very much so for feature engineering. Uh, but then also once you have your results of a model, you can share predictions using an API. So you might have something, an interface where people, or a, a endpoint where people can send uh, their inputs, like send the data and get back a prediction. The Vetiver package from Posit is all about this. Uh, it's creating APIs or lots of other things too, but it's, it involves creating APIs for your uh, machine learning models. The next category I have is, I call it researchers, but it's anyone with like data that they want to share uh, that you can create APIs just to put things out there. And that that is something where you would, uh, you know, you might be comfortable in R. And so you would want to create those APIs in R that will help you with that. And then uh, the final category I have is shiny app designers or app, you know, app producers where um, you kind of, you're likely to want both halves of this, that you might want to read some data in from some external source. And then um, even more so, it can be helpful if you have a massive shiny app to divide and conquer, to split up some of the logic of the shiny app into an API that then your shiny app calls uh, using the reading half of things. Um, so a question I have is, does anyone feel like uh, they aren't covered by those four roles? Anyone who is here? All right, I will, oh, okay. Yeah, we've got a looks good, so good. <laughs> All right. So next up, um, I'm gonna, I have a couple slides here talking about what will be covered. Um, I've divided it into, right now it's two parts, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about possibly a third part. And uh, this is where this survey that I've mentioned a couple of times, I'm putting it into the chat. Um, I would really, uh, really appreciate it if anyone here or watching later could fill out this survey as soon as possible so that I can apply it for next week, ideally. Um, one of the things in there is just going through all of the planned chapters that I'm going to describe in a minute and kind of just checking which one of those sound like something that you would want to learn. Um, so if there's anything in there that uh, isn't relevant to you, I want to see that. So that's what that survey is, or that and other things are what that survey is about. Um, but the the first section of this book, the first part is about um, getting web data into R. So that is about using the hitter two package primarily to um, hit web APIs and pull information into R. And then part two is the other direction. How can I create my own APIs with R? That's basically about the plumber package. And it's also about deploying um, APIs. And there may, might be, I don't have a chapter about it right now, but there might be a little bit in there about um, alternatives to Plumber that you can use to create your own APIs. And then that part three that I'm considering would be like um, use cases or uh, uh, case studies, recipes for things that kind of span all the parts. Um, I'm not sure about this yet because I'd ideally like to just integrate those into the chapters as we go, we'll see these use cases. But the example of that shiny app that you're pulling apart into um, APIs that you then read with the Shiny app, that one kind of spans the whole book. So that one might um, get pulled out as a use case. Uh, so that, you know, I have questions on the survey about that, but if anyone has any thoughts about, if you have a use case that you feel like it's kind of a big thing, um, I would love to hear about that for sure. And really actually any use cases you have that I ask about on the survey, you can give me examples. Like I say, I want to integrate those throughout the chapters. Um, and so those would be useful. Um, and so now, before we talk too much more about that, I'm going to go ahead and kind of and go through all the chapters, just a real quick summary of what they're going to be so that when you're filling out the survey, you can say, oh, yeah, that one sounded interesting or not. So, all right. All right. So the chapters, uh, like I said, there's going to be a bit of a whirlwind. Um, we will have a lot more detail as we go through the book, hopefully. Um, so, 
All right, so for part one, again, this is all about getting data into uh, R from the web. So using primarily using the hitter two package. Uh, right now, the first chapter in there is this general chapter, how do computers communicate? It's basically about what an API is. Um, I'm already very strongly considering splitting, like getting rid of this chapter. The reason for that is you don't really do any R coding until the chapter after this. Um, so I'll, you know, feel free to say that you don't like this chapter and I, I will take a crack at trying to split it. Um, it has a, like a definition of an API that probably could go into this intro chapter and then the rest of it could get spread throughout the book, but we'll, um, we can discuss that. The, so the first like real chapter in my mind is this, how can I access APIs from R? This is an intro to hitter two and it'll get you in um, accessing some simple uh, APIs like right away. And the reason it has to be simple is we're not gonna get into uh, authentication in this and um, some other things. And so it has to be like a public open API in order for this to work, which leads us to the next chapter is how do I tell the API who I am? That is about authentication. So that's where you can start. Once you've hit that chapter, you can stumble your way through uh, just about any API is the idea. Um, but then we're going to go into more details, like uh, once you get something back from an API, okay, what do you do with it? Usually it'll be like really nested um, JSON, which is a you know certain data format. Um, so there's a whole chapter about kind of how to deal with that thing coming back in. We'll, we'll also touch on how to deal with uh, like images or other binary objects that can come back from an API uh, effectively as text. And so how to deal with that and um, process it. Uh, how can you, Next up we have a, how can I get a lot of data from an API? So there I'm gonna be talking about, um, you know, the kind of things that as a data scientist or uh, anyone else using R, you're very, or it's likely that at least at times you're gonna want to get, you know, some, you know, like those addresses where they were geocoding those addresses to latitude and longitude. Um, a lot of times you're going to be wanting to make batch requests where you send in a lot and get back a lot, or possibly you're going to want to iterate through and get a lot of things. Um, sometimes the, the API will be sending you just page after page of data, and that has something special to deal with. And so that chapter is dealing with all those cases. Um, Next, I have a chapter about finding APIs. Um, in order to uh, use APIs, you have to be able to find them. So this is going to be, uh, this one, there's a little asterisk on this because one of my favorite sites for, for doing this is um, currently down and it's available on GitHub. And so I'm looking into possibly bringing it back myself. Um, if I can't get, like I'm in a Slack with the guy who runs it and, He's not replying, so that's a little bit uh, disturbing. Disturbing. It's only been a few days, so hopefully that'll get sorted out. But anyway, so it'll be about using some of these sites that index um, APIs, and then also like um, using the developer tools in Chrome to discover kind of hidden APIs, um, kind of what to look for on a website to find the APIs that they might have hiding. So that's all that kind of thing. And then right now a separate chapter, which might end up getting merged in, is how can I find API wrapping packages? I originally had those as one chapter. I started to make the slides and it was a lot of material, but it, I don't know, I'm gonna see if maybe it'll merge back together. This is, um, you know, there are a lot of packages out there, uh, both on CRAN and off of CRAN for uh, accessing existing APIs. And so this is gonna be about finding those packages and evaluating them. Um, sometimes they're out of date and like sometimes that means they just like barely don't work and you might be able to tweak some things and make them work and then sometimes you know i also want to talk about how to kind of see oh that's this is unsalvageable this is from an old version of the api that doesn't uh ma or work anymore um so yes yeah, so kevin has a great question will finding apis so the chapter um that one right there be about reading and understanding API docs and doc formats? That is a great question. And um, 
So probably unless you don't need it by this point, because there will be some of that in the other chapters. Um, and so we'll, we'll kind of, we'll see. Um, I know, and it's been a little bit since I made the first draft of these slides. I know that I reference uh, some of the, um, the formats in earlier chapters, but yeah, that's a great point that we might, uh, anything that's left uh, of kind of how to make sense of API documentation would also be in there. Um, all right, the next one is how else can I communicate with APIs from R? So this is a little bit of a grab bag chapter, but everything up to now has basically been about this the package hitter too. Um, this is, there are other technologies. So there's something called WebSockets, which hitter two is not built to play with uh, necessarily, where you can do like two-way communication with APIs. Uh, there's graph query language, which is pretty popular right now. And um, there's Google uh, remote, is it GRPC, Google remote procedure calls, which is a new format for APIs, newish. Um, so this is kind of hitting on these other options, a little bit of a grab bag there. And then uh, how can I get data from web pages? So that chapter is a little bit vague and gen generic, but um, which is something I do want to refine as we go through. But the general idea of this one is there's the package rvest. So originally I had this chapter pretty early, actually it was going to be like right at the top of this section uh, because it's kind of the, low hanging fruit for getting data from web pages, but it's usually the wrong way to do it. It's better if there is an API available, it's you're being a better like net citizen by using the API if it exists. And a lot of times it just won't work to get the data, but this is all about like scraping web pages. So it, if, as a last resort, if you can't request the data that you need, this is how to like pull it out of what is available meant for humans instead of being meant for computers. Um, this is also covered in uh, R4DS, the current edition of that book relatively well, but I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail than they do because we'll have the background at this point that we can recognize, oh, this is actually being put together by an API or um, maybe it's an API that we don't have access to, but you can kind of see how it's structured, things like that. And then at the end of each of these sections, each of these parts, I have a chapter, how can I learn more about accessing web APIs in this case? Uh, the idea here is um, there will be things that I just can't cover either at all, or at least can't cover in depth. And so I wanna have a chapter that's just kind of some of the main things that I know I didn't cover. Here's where you could go to learn more about those. These chapters may, I, I think that they're gonna survive but they might end up being very short. We might not, um, you know, we probably won't spend a whole week covering them, um, but we'll see. <laughs> All right, and then in, um, I guess before I go into part two, uh, feel, please hop in if you if there's anything that you would have expected to see in that first half that isn't there. Um, and again, you can also just tell me on the survey. So I'll go ahead and continue on to part two. How can I create my own APIs with R? Oh, did I? Okay, I thought I heard. I was, yeah, yeah, was going to ask a question. Uh, so for computers, computers communicating, are you is a, is part of that also like HTTP? Uh, yes. Protocol. Okay. So that's yeah. That is where I talk about the HTTP protocol and other protocols. Um, a little bit about some history, but the like the more I think about it, I feel like I could explain what HTTP is in that chapter where I introduce HTTR2 or hitter two. Um, and so it's kind of funny that I like, I've gone back and forth on, on this. And then the day before this meeting, I was like, oh, I should merge those back together. So we'll see um, <laughs> before next week, I will figure that out. Uh, but I, I really wanna have some code as soon as possible. And right now, the way things are laid out, you wouldn't really get into code into until what's a, uh, um, really chapter three. How can I access APIs from R? And, mm -hmm. you know, that's no good. So I'll probably end up 
kind of so it would be that first chapter would merge into the second one and then pieces of it would be scattered throughout the rest of the section um i think that's probably what i'll end up doing because i'd rather get into the code or even possibly have a version of how can i access apis from r and then get into then have the chapter after that be the details about what did we just see basically um so that's what i'm going to be doing this week is sorting that out and cool. but i yeah i would definitely love to hear um you can see the first version of like every slide deck i created these decks in uh mostly in november like i went through and made a deck for every chapter so if you kind of if you're curious if you think that maybe something isn't relevant to you and but you want to look at what it will be they're there they're not great yet but they're there all right so part two this is the plumber half creating your own apis um the first section how or first chapter how can i create an api this is an introduction to plumber um the very basic um interface and what it looks like and how to work with it and i i have a little bit in there of kind of how to set up a plumber project so that we're kind of on the same page as we add to it and make it more detailed uh next we have how can i get inputs from api users so presumably if you have an api set up you want to, people to be able to tell you something so that you can uh give a response that's tailored to them and so this is all about how to accept all the different types of parameters that you can take. Um, you can have people uh, send you an image that you process perhaps or different things like that and how to do all of that. Uh, how can I control API output? So this is all the options both within Plumber and kind of adjacent to Plumber about creating uh, outputs that you're sending back to users. Uh, how can I handle API errors? So there's, um, this is one of the cases where Plumber has some level of um, processing here. And actually, it has a lot, but it's not clear how to do it from the documentation. But they have some pieces of it. Uh, so this is one of the chapters that I feel like it's kind of the missing manual of Plumber. Um, Plumber's really po powerful. Um, if you've never worked with it, that's you know, it's totally fine. But uh, that will be something that we're going to go into that you can create really cool APIs that do just about anything. Um, but there's a little bit of, uh, like I, I spent a lot of November reading the code of Plumber and figuring out, okay, what does this do? Oh, I see. Okay. And finding different um, tricks that people have uh, pulled out and then verifying that they are kind of there in the code and work the way that they're supposed to. Um, I'm going to have a separate chapter about authentic authenticating API users with Plumber. Um, you know, we talked uh, in chapter, whatever, chapter, or the third chapter of part one about how to authenticate yourself to an API. And this is how to be on the other side of that, um, whether it's with an API key or uh, cookies or um, the OAuth 2 system, which we'll get into uh, some of this. Um, I know can be done in Plumber, but uh, it's not. It's a it's a little bit beyond again the basic use cases because oh we'll talk about when we get to that chapter. But so this is going to be some some uh, interesting things there. I think. Uh, how can I test my Plumber API? This one's a little bit kind of um, coding philosophy of how to make things that are easier to test, and then using that uh, how to do the various things like setting up a mock version of your API that you can use for testing. Um, it's, uh, anyway, that's a whole chapter. How do I deploy my Plumber API? So I have um, a little breakdown on here and I actually forgot to put this in the survey. So if you have any thoughts in the chat, if, if this is something that you can think about, we'll get talk about it more as we get close to it too, that there are, like there's a package Plumber deploy. There are guides about doing it certain ways, but you know, there's, Amazon Web Services, uh, Google Cloud, uh, Azure from Microsoft, DigitalOcean, um, Posit Cloud, which is their um, partially free offering. You can actually deploy Plumber APIs onto Posit Cloud. And then Posit Connect is like the easy one. And a lot of things kind of assume Posit Connect 
which I know a lot of people aren't working with Posit Connect. And so I want to go into kind of all these different ways of um, deploying. But I, you know, I definitely will want to hear uh, what use cases people actually are using and how much of a struggle they're having. So as we get closer to this, you know, we'll be going through some APIs. And if people try to deploy their APIs before we get to it, um, I'll definitely want to know what people are struggling with because they're there's like a million options, but none of them are easy right now. And the chapter could get pretty unwieldy. unwieldy. Uh, it is, so uh, Kevin said in the chat, underneath them all it's Docker. And a thing that, um, I don't know, it bothers me a little bit that uh, in a lot of the guides, people will just say, okay, and then you can just like use, use Docker to deploy. It's like, well, that doesn't, there are a lot of steps in between there. Um, how you deploy using Docker on each of them can be very different. And so, yes, like working with Docker and then also potentially going into like Kubernetes and some different options um, can make them similar for sure. And that is helpful, but there's still a lot of work to be done there and how to get things set up. I mean, to a degree, obviously this isn't a book about Amazon Web Services, so I can't totally cover it, but um yeah, we'll see as we get there. This is just, this is an area that I think is harder than it needs to be, but it is still that hard. Like there aren't really, there isn't, um, for Shiny, there's shinyapps.io. It's super easy to deploy there. There's a free tier. Um, it's easy to kind of get started and there's no equivalent for Plumber. And so I want to kind of talk about what you can do to get as close as possible. Um all right, and then um, again, how can I learn more about creating API, creating APIs? I know for sure that this will talk about um, a book that I'm going to mention actually a little bit later in these slides about like kind of the philosophy of API design. I'm not going to be able to go into all of that within this book because that's like there are many books entirely about that. Um, and so I will be referencing that kind of thing in here. Um, probably pushing or pointing people to some of the posit documentation as well all throughout uh, that sort of thing. And then I do have a little note on here about that part three of use cases, for example, subdividing a shiny app, which may or may not um, end up existing. We'll see how, as we go through. Um, I know that was a whirlwind, but is there anything that is uh, that you notice is missing? Feel free to hop in if so. And if not, like I said, there's that survey. All right, I'm going to go ahead and, oh, I did have a little, okay, what else? So that's, if you have anything else missing. All right, um, next up, I want to talk a little bit about prerequisites. So um, my goal for this book is for there to be very few um, like hard, solid prerequisites. I'll point to resources uh, when they would be helpful. Um, but I like I don't want to require that you've read any particular books. Uh, I am going to assume some familiarity with R. Uh, so you know this won't be a book on R. Um, I would definitely point people to R for Data Science, although it's a big book, so I know not everyone has actually read the whole thing. But just if you have uh, questions about working with R in general, uh, that'll be things I put off, push off. And I also, I think in the actual book, I will, um, you know, recommend that advanced, advanced R is helpful, especially if you're writing your own APIs uh, to be able to deal with some of the details, um, fancier ways of dealing with errors and things like that. Uh, advanced R is very, very good for that. And then R packages, because I will, especially in that second part, be talking about wrapping things up into a package. And so something I was curious about if, um, you know, it, again, it's on the survey, but if it, I'm just curious to, if it, uh, if you can say, if you're able to come off of the, or turn on a camera or say in the chat, I'm, I'm curious how many of you have read R4DS in part or in whole? If you can, I don't know, put up a thing, okay. And I know Kevin has, right? You, you ran a, I think you ran a cohort, maybe not. 
Advanced Star I did, but oh. uh, R for DS. Okay. I've read, okay. I've, I've like skimmed part. I've read yeah, most of it across a thousand sittings, maybe. But yeah. <laughs> that's that's how I was. I I just read it for the first time myself last year, or I think it was over a year and a half. Whatever. Uh, I think we finished in 2023. Um, I did a book club, and I'm running another book club now because it has slightly changed since I read it. Uh, I read it before they finished the second edition. Um. Anyway, yes. So next up, how about Advanced R? I know, again, Kevin ran our cohort, so I know Kevin read Advanced R. How about Jackie and Brendan? Okay. Um, R packages, have you done that one, Kevin? Uh, no, just the whole game okay. chapter. I've read that one. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably, so... Uh, okay, and so yeah, some R packages, like if you've poked at it, that is probably enough um i guess i'm curious how many of you ha have written a function in r is that i mean i would guess from what we've talked about that probably that's a yes yeah um how about written a package so you you've read pieces of our uh our packages have you written a package just for yourself or anything um yeah okay uh how about published a package on CRAN? Anybody? Working on it? And no, yeah, I, that's what I I expected. I, I think I've got an idea <laughs> of uh, who's going to be coming this way. Um, how about, uh, have you accessed an API from R with uh, Hitter, the original Hitter? Um, Brendan has, I think, uh kevin yeah kevin has um because i helped you <laughs> convert to hitter two for uh the package we worked on together next uh have you used hitter two and again i know kevin has How about jackie and brendan not yet and yes i good um good to both of those like i want some people who have touched it and i want some people who want to um I would expect like my target audience is definitely people who have not mastered it. At least um, they may have used it, but not necessarily used it at all. And then um, I am curious if anyone has accessed an API from R some other way. And if so, like what you have experience with, if there's no one there, I can uh, totally understand that. I'm guessing, I mean, um, Chances are that you may have accessed an API um, with a uh, a package, um, but you don't always know that that's happening necessarily. And so, yeah, a Git request versus like you would still need curl or hitter for that probably, um, or technically just calling the system um, functions. But okay, good. I, I think good. <laughs> like at least this small subset of my audience. Um, yeah, Azure R, if you've used that, you've used the you've hit APIs. If you've used any of the like pause packages for AWS, you've hit APIs. Um if you've uh worked with GitHub in R, then with GERT and GH or other uh packages, then you've used APIs, but um Okay. All right. Well, welcome, uh, Tim, who is not who has connected to audio. Welcome. Um, I'm just about to wrap up the I think the last slide, but uh, welcome. So, oh, I guess I've got two slides left. So, next, I want to talk a little bit about what you won't learn in this book. So, what I will not be covering. I don't intend to talk about how to use uh, hitter the older version of uh, the package that Hadley Wickham wrote to access uh, APIs and probably not curl the like lower level, how to, how to access um, APIs kind of at the um, more basic instruction level. Um, I might have like notes and that kind of thing about these, but my thought is if you're learning, learning how to do it, learn how to do it with the new updated way. So um, I'm going to be focusing almost purely on hitter two. Um, I'm not going to be 
going into any other programming languages, um, you know, JavaScript, Python, anything like that. There are plenty of other books about that. So I won't be doing that. Um, I won't be going much. So I say covered a tiny bit, but I won't be going a lot into how you should design a complex API. Um, like I said, this designing APIs with Swagger and Open API is currently the book I would recommend for that. And it's a whole book and it's about like the kind of philosophy of uh, documentation first and all these different things. I'll mention that uh, as we're building our Plumber APIs, but I, I can't go into everything, obviously. And then I'm also not going to really teach you how to administer an enterprise API. Um, there's the book DevOps for Data Science, which we did a book club on, and it's uh, it's still in progress, but it's about to come out, I think. Um, that kind of covers like really administering like a heavy production level API, but it's it doesn't even like even there they say you should work with professionals. This book is mostly about how to talk to the professionals about how this should work. Um, I just, you know, again, that's a whole career and I can't cover that like in a chapter in the book and that kind of thing. Um, so the question I have here, and I actually, I think I left this off the survey, but is there anything else that um, you would expect that's neither on this slide nor in the table of contents? Um, if so, I definitely want to hear about those so that I can decide, do they belong in the book or do they belong in the, what won't be in the book? So I want to make sure that people can find, you know, figure that out. Um, and, you know, feel free to say it in the chat or in Slack if you have anything there. So the last piece is, uh, what do you think? So, um, you know, we didn't cover uh, actual, like, material <laughs> today. We covered the idea of the material. But I do have this form, um, this Google form, and... Uh, my intention is to do these after each chapter of, um, I, I, you know, that's the whole point. I want to know how it is, what people think, whether it's covering what you want to see covered, um, whether it's raising questions without answering them. Um, so let me know what you think. And with that, I'll open it up. Does anyone have any comments, questions, anything else? opinions <laughs> so next week you'll start with the chapter presentation or... yeah so um no so that's something that's in the survey i i am leaning towards that in the real book like when we're when we're going um i'll probably take two weeks per chapter but not this first one because this first one doesn't have two weeks of material in it and the idea will be I'll do the first week I'll do presenting the material, um, hopefully covering that whole chapter's worth of stuff. And the notes will be there for you to kind of review afterwards, play around with, do some things. And then in the Slack, we'll talk a little bit about various aspects of it. I'll make some revisions. I'll write some questions. And then week two, we'll talk about the questions and, uh, you know, whether I fixed any issues that it had. Now, we'll see. I ask about that in the survey, and I think that we'll kind of play it by ear throughout as we go. If, you know, if I have a chapter that we go through and everyone's like, yep, yeah, that made sense. Um, and then I ask some questions in the Slack and people are like, yeah, those make sense. Then there's not necessarily any point in doing that chapter, you know, doing a second week on that chapter. Uh, but all that is to say, so yeah, next week I plan to cover a chapter. Um, in the next uh, few days, I will be deciding whether it's the chapter as it stands right now, or whether I'm going to most likely I'm going to um, merge those first two chapters to to a degree. Uh, we may skip a little bit, and so maybe I'll, I'll probably talk about that next week. If so, some of that first chapter might almost definitely actually will go into this chapter. Um, kind of before we start talking about what we'll cover, I want to at least define what an API is, because I throw that around a lot in this chapter and I haven't defined it. Um, anyway, so yeah, next next week, almost definitely next week is going to be an intro to hit or two uh, with a little bit of uh, definition sprinkled throughout. All right. 
Well, thank you very much, everyone, for, for being here. Um, I will go ahead and stop sharing. Um, and, you know, please, please, if you can, fill out that survey. And uh, that will help me, you know, the sooner you can get that filled out, the better, because that's going to help me determine uh, each week what I am working on. <laughs> and with that, I will see you on Slack. Bye.